You broke. You ain't got nothing. The Bible has a play for that. Give. And you could go ahead and force God's hand right now if you would take them shoes off and give them to somebody. I'm pretty sure you've got that backwards. When you listen to some of these people that talk about giving and receiving and being blessed financially, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with being blessed financially. Now, the means that you take to get money, the motive behind it, that can be sinful. And I think what's happening is we've got people in the pulpit that are promoting a sinful and a backwards way of looking at things. Now, I don't know who this person is. He He's a, I don't know, preacher. I don't know, said miracle, miracle word church. So uh, he's talking about money and he's gotten things a bit backwards. It's not something you hear in church. Say it again. I'm anointed to be wealthy. And here's the thing. When God blesses you, don't ever apologize that he blessed you. Now, it's okay to be wealthy. That's fine. But you're not anointed to be wealthy. God didn't say, you know what? I'm going to pour this anointing on you so that you can be blessed, so that you can have all the money that you need to be wealthy. No, we don't say that in the Bible, do we? Oh, got a new car, did you? Must be nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It's very, very nice. You want to get in and smell the new car smell? It's gorgeous. I don't have to hold my car together with duct tape and Christian bumper stickers. Don't let my car fool you. My treasure's laid up in heaven. You should also have some treasure here on this earth, because if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Okay, there's two things that he says that's just wrong. One, about giving, how you should give, and then storing up treasures. Let's go to the one first about storing up treasures. Uh, he's got that backwards. The Bible says, Jesus says, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in, but store for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys. For where your treasure is, verse 21, there will your heart be. Now, you are. it's nothing wrong to have treasures on earth, but to store up treasures for earth. In other words, if your focus is to be wealthy on earth, uh, especially to the detriment of having treasure in heaven, that's the problem. So there is no command to store up wealth on earth. If you should, if you, if you have the ability to be prudent and wise and make financial decisions that benefit you and your family going forward, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the motive behind it. But then he goes into where it says, give and it will be given to you. Well, Again, there is the problem. There is the motivation uh, that we see there. Let's go back a little further to what Jesus is saying, and we can see the whole thing. Verse 30, let's start there. He says, give to everyone who asks of you and whoever takes away what is yours. Do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to be treated. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it for you? For even sinners do the same. You see the kind of the, the context of what he's saying? If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? So giving in order to get back, especially giving to God to get back, that is the wrong motivation. Look what he says, though. If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great. So we can see kind of the whole context of, of what he's speaking, how Jesus is saying this. He's not saying this is some sort of money scheme. He says in verse 37, do not judge and you will not be judged and do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Pardon and you will not be and you will not be pardoned. Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Now, he's not necessarily speaking about money, but his point is the attitude that you do. If you do these things, if you give love, if you get maybe money, but anything, whatever it is, you're not doing it with those those previous motives that Jesus says, don't do it that way. You're doing it just because and then you will receive back. Will you receive back money? Not necessarily. As a matter of fact, oftentimes you might not receive back money, but you're giving out of the goodness of your heart. And so we're putting the, the we're putting things backwards. It's not that we give or we do these things to get something back. And we're not trying to store up treasures on earth. We are trying to, as we're commanded to, store up treasures in heaven. And then we have this other backwards way of thinking that we can do something to kind of motivate God. And again, the motivation is greed. The motivation is money. And so let's listen to Mike Todd, how he gets so many other things wrong. He gets this wrong as well about getting money the way you get money is that you give to kind of move or as he says his own words to force god's hand may i submit to you 
that he has written a manual called the word of God that gives us the ability at any time to move his hand by obeying his word. Oh my God. Okay. If you're waiting on God, I got a secret for you. You can move him. If you follow the plays that he has written in his word, you broke, you ain't got nothing. The Bible has a play for that. Give. And it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and... You see, so this is kind of a scheme. This is how you get money, how you can move or force God. And listen now how he puts it. You could say overflow, it will be put into your lap. But you're waiting for somebody to give you something. And you could go ahead and force God's hand right now if you would take them shoes off and give them to somebody. That's completely unbiblical. You can force, you can force God's hand. If you give that, you'll force God to give something back to you. Obviously, not necessarily coming out from heaven, but someone else will come and bless you. That is not biblical. As a matter of fact, the Bible does say freely you receive, so freely give. So the reason why you give is because you receive. It's backwards. It's not to give in order to get. It's give because you've already gotten from God. If you never get anything back, which is why Jesus says you give because you expect something back. And what you're not doing is you're not really giving you, what you are doing, in essence, is you're lending. You're making an investment, hoping for a return on our investment. The reason why we do something is because God first did us. That's why John says that we love because he first loved us. We don't give because uh, we want to give something back. We give because he first gave to us, and we're doing it out of gratitude, out of love. And so these people, if you follow their ways, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. You're going to find yourself on the wrong end of God's wrath. You don't want that. You don't want to find yourself being one of those who, as Paul says, those people who want to get rich, they fall into a snap. They fall um, into a snare. They fall into a trap uh, of the devil because you become you become a slave to that. You want to, once you start down this path, you're going to find yourself. And oh, by the way, Lord help you if you do give and you get something back. Now you've got an incentive to keep doing it just that way. So the only reason why you're doing it is just to get something back. You're not giving out of the love of your heart. And so therein lies the problem. And you'll see someone that might have a new car, someone that has a nice suit on, nice clothes uh, that seems to be doing well financially. You're going to see them. And then that might be the motivation. It's that carrot that's dangled in front of your eyes. You see, well, it worked for them. He's got nice cars. He's got nice clothes. He's got money, nice house. Uh, look what he's wearing. Money's not a problem for him, and so maybe I ought to do what he's doing. Maybe I ought to follow his principle. But then you turn around and look at their lives, especially if you turn around and look at their doctrine. Their doctrine is so devoid of worshiping God. Their doctrine is so far away from sound soundness, but that's not the point. Their point is, look at what I'm doing. Look what I got. And so they'll preach a lot about you being blessed. Be careful about those folks that tell you how to get blessed financially but have no way to tell you how to be blessed spiritually. And I mean spiritually in terms of you have joy because you fall in love with the word. And that would be more than enough. If the word of God isn't more enough, if the word of God is not your treasure, it's not what you desire the most, well, then you maybe can have that reward. You can probably have it, but I promise you, you will not be able to spend money that well in hell. Amen. 